So in 1.2, I'm going to split this over two lessons. We're going to do reflections in lesson number one and stretches in lesson number two. So we're going to deal with reflections first. So a reflection is a special type of a transformation and it's creating mirror images. So all the points are going to be reflected across a line of reflection so that they're equal distances from that line of reflection. And in 30-1, we will do three different types of reflections. We're going to do a reflection over the x-axis, which is y equal to zero. We're going to do a reflection over the y-axis, which is x equal to zero. Those are the two reflections that we will cover in 1.2. And then we will have a reflection over the identity line, which is inverses, and we'll cover that in 1.4. Now, when we talk about any kind of a transformation, reflections, stretches, etc., we're talking about points that do not change. Invariant points stay the same. So we just finished 1.1, and I didn't mention invariant points in 1.1, and I just want to talk why is that? Why don't we have invariant points when we talk about translations? So imagine I have this function here and I translate it and I can do any kind of translation. Let's say I move it over one, two units to the right and then I'll move it down one, two, three units. So why don't I talk about invariant points? Why are there no points that are staying the same? Well, the answer is a translation moves everything. So translations move all your points, left, right, up or down, and nothing stays the same. And in fact, my tip for you Translations are the only transformation without invariant points. So everything else is going to have invariant points. Let's look at an example. So I have my original graph in blue, f of x, and my transformed graph in red, g of x. Now I notice that my points line up vertically. So this point here, 1 and 1 on f of x, becomes the point 1, negative 1 on g of x. The point 4, 2 on f of x becomes the point 4, negative 2 on g of x. And same thing here, 9, 3 becomes the point 9, negative 3. So they do line up vertically, and what it looks like is they are mirror images of one another. And in fact, it is a vertical reflection in the x-axis. So I have a little tip about terminology here. When we talk about reflections, points are reflected in an axis. That's the word that they're going to be looking for in the diploma. We want to say that points are reflected in an axis. So in this case, in the x-axis. So since I'm reflecting in the x-axis, do we have any invariant points? Any points that are perhaps not reflected? And if you look at, there is one special point, and that is the x-intercept, which has coordinates for this graph of 0, 0. So any point that lies on the line of reflection will be invariant because if it's on the reflection line, it can't itself be reflected. Okay, let's talk about mapping notation. Let's look at what's happening with our points. So let's first of all look at our x points. If you look at our x points, every single one of them stays the same. So my mapping notation x, y is going to become x and let's examine what's happening with my y values. So I go from one to negative 1, 2 to negative 2, 3 to negative 3. They are opposite values of one another. So they're the same number, but they're opposite values. So when I say negative y, I don't want you to think that all the y values are becoming negative because that's not true. Because f of x is also the reflection of g of x, and I can go from negative to positive, negative to positive. So that negative y really means y is multiplied by negative 1 to become an opposite value. So positive 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, but conversely negative 2 times negative 1 gives us positive. I think I said 1 there. I meant negative 2 times negative 1 gives us positive 2. So that negative really means multiplied by negative 1. So in terms of the equation, g of x is the same as negative 1 times f of x, and that would be your equation. Okay, in this example looks a little different. The points actually line up horizontally. So let's look at the points here. So f of x is our original function in blue. g of x is our transformed function in red. 
So this point negative 1, 4 becomes this point here, 1, positive 4. This point here, negative 2, 1, becomes this point here, positive 2, 1. And negative 3, 0 becomes the point 3, 0. So each one of these points are an equal distance apart from one another with respect to the y-axis. So because they line up horizontally, it is actually a horizontal reflection in the y-axis. So again, I want to look, are there points on the y, or sorry, on, on this graph that stay the same? I'm looking for invariant points. And those are actually going to be any point on the line of reflection on the y-axis, which is our y-intercept. So this point 0 and 9 is an invariant point because it lies on that line of reflection. Okay, so again, I want to come up with the mapping notation. So if you look at your y values this time, those are what stay the same. See how they're the same for every single one? So in terms of my mapping notation, y stays the same. Let's look at my x points, negative 1 to 1, negative 2 to 2, negative 3 to 3. So again, they are opposite values of one another. So I'm going to write that as a negative x. And similar to the vertical reflection, for a horizontal reflection, negative x, y, the negative x does not mean it's, it's a negative value. So it doesn't mean that they're all negative x's. It means multiplied by negative 1 to become the opposite value. So I can reflect negative 1 times one, negative 1 is 1, or I can conversely reflect 1 times negative 1 to become back here to negative 1. So in terms of my equation, it's going to be g of x is equal to f of x times negative 1, negative f of x. Okay, so let's use what we know now about reflections to actually draw some graphs. So we have this graph of f of x shown. We want to graph negative f of x. So it looks like my function is multiplied by negative 1, which tells me it's a vertical reflection. So my x values stay the same and y become the opposite values. So these points here that are negative are going to be multiplied by negative 1 to become positive. The one that is positive will be multiplied by negative 1 to become negative. So let's line these up. Negative 4 is 3 away, 3 below the y-axis. So when I reflect it, it will be 3 above. At negative 2, the blue point here is 3 below, so it will be 3 above. The green point here at x equal to 3 is 4 above, so when I reflect it, it will be 4 below. And this red point when x is 5 is 4 below, so when I reflect it, it will be 4 above. Now, these points right here both have a y value of 0. And when I reflect it multiplied by negative 1, it stays as 0 because these are, in fact, invariant points. So I can connect my dots here, uh, purple to blue, and then blue to red, red to green, to red, and then back up to pink. And this would be the graph y equal to negative f of x. Okay, so I want to do the same thing, except now I want to have f of negative x. So over here, f of negative x. So x is multiplied by negative 1 this time, which tells me it's a horizontal reflection. So that means that y stays the same, x is reflected by multiplying it by negative 1. So here at negative 3, sorry, at, yeah, at negative 3 here, I'm 2 away, so when I reflect it, I will be 2 away in the other direction. Here at y equal to 3, I'm 4 to the left, so when I reflect it, I will be 4 to the right. The red, or sorry, the pink point here is 5 to the right, so when I reflect it, it will be 5 to the left. And then the same thing here, it'll be 3 to the right, and when I reflect it, it is 3 to the left. These points here, I'll do the same thing. I'm 1 to the right, so I'll be 1 to the left. 4 to the right, I will be 4 to the left. So looking for invariant points, I'm looking for points that when I multiply the x value by negative 1, it remains unchanged. And since it's reflected on the y-axis, it will be anything on the y-axis, such as this point right here. That will be my invariant point. Okay, so now I just have to connect the dots. So I've got 
purple to blue, and then I'm going to go to red, and then through brown, up to the green, and then down to blue, and down to pink. And this graph here will be y equals to f of negative x. So that would be my graph horizontally reflected. Okay, so now we're going to look at some equations. So I have this cubic equation, and it's going to be reflected in the x-axis. And I want to write the new equation in terms of f of x in general, and in terms of x specific. Okay, so reflecting it in the x-axis means that x stays the same, it is y that changes. So y becomes its opposite value, so we multiply the y values by negative 1. So in terms of f of x, y equal to f of x, I multiply it by negative 1, becomes negative y equals f of x. And of course, I want a y equals equation, so I divide everything by negative 1, and I get y equals negative f of x. I'll do the same thing over here. So in terms of x now, I want to go back to the original equation, x cubed plus x squared minus 4. So I'm going to multiply y by negative 1. And again, I don't want a negative y equals equation. I want a y equals equation. So I just divide everything by negative 1. So this becomes y equals negative x cubed minus x squared plus 4. So see how they all become their opposite values. Okay, so that would be the equation reflected in the x-axis. So again, I can check that on my calculator. Here's my original equation into y1, and here is both of those equations, one in terms of x, the other in terms of f of x. And you can see that even though there's two equations in the red, they only produce one graph. And you can see that that is, in fact, a reflection in the x-axis, so I know that I've done that correctly. This time I want to reflect it in the y-axis, again in terms of f of x and in terms of x. So when I reflect in the y-axis, that means that y stays the same this time, and x is what changes, so from positive to negative or negative to positive. So to show that, we multiply x by negative 1. So y equals f of negative 1 times x y equals negative, sorry, y equals f of negative x. Here, I multiply all my x values by negative 1. Now, 4 doesn't have an x value, so it stays as minus 4. Let's simplify this. When I have a negative number and I cube it, it stays negative, so that's negative x cubed. When I have a negative number and I square it, a negative times a negative is a positive, and then that stays the same. So again, we can put these into our calculator to see if that does show a reflection in the y-axis. So again, my original in terms of x and in terms of f of x. And you can see that even though there are two equations in the red, there's only one graph produced. And I can see that that is a reflection in the y-axis. So I know I've done that one correctly as well. And the last one, let's do both. We're going to reflect it both in the x-axis and in the y-axis. So reflecting it in both. So that means that x becomes its opposite value and y also becomes its opposite value. So negative 1 times y equals f of negative 1 times x. I don't want a negative y equals equation, so I divide both sides by negative 1, and I get negative f of negative x. So y equals negative f of negative x. We're going to do the same thing in terms of x, so back to the equation. Multiply y by negative 1, and each of my x values by negative 1. Okay, so I'm going to tidy up my x's first. So negative x cubed is just x cu negative x cubed. Negative x squared is positive x squared minus 4. And then I divide everything by negative 1, so everything becomes its opposite value. So negative divided by a negative, a positive divided by a negative, and a negative divided by a negative. And that becomes my new equation. So again, I want to put that into my calculator to see if I am correct. So I have my original function and my in terms of x and in terms of f of x equations. So you can see even though there are two equations in uh, y2, y3, only one red graph is produced, which tells me that I'm correct. 
and I can see this is a reflection. This one's a little harder to see, but you can see it's been reflected over X and then reflected over Y if you look at those parts. Okay, so this part here reflected over X and then reflected over Y. I can see that that works as well. Okay, in my last part of the lesson here now, I want to give you a graph and come up with the equation. So we've gone equation to graph, equation to equation, and now we're going graph to equation. So f of x in blue is the original. We want to find the equation of g of x, which is in red, in terms of x. So my tip for you, to, in order to tell what kind of a reflection there has been, is to look for the invariant points. If there are invariant points on the x-axis, it's a vertical reflection. If the invariant points are on the y-axis, it is a horizontal reflection. So looking at the first one here, see how they both have this in common? This is an invariant point, and it's on the x-axis, which tells me it is a vertical reflection. So to write that in terms of f of x, we know that the equation is going to be that g of x is equal to negative f of x. So I just multiply my y value by negative 1. Okay, and now my equation is 2x minus 3. So in terms of x, my equation is going to be g of x is equal to. So I'm just going to multiply everything by negative 1. So negative 2x and then plus 3. I can see because these are linear that this is correct because g of x does have a y-intercept at 3 and it also has a negative slope. Okay, let's look at the other one. So this one here, I have an invariant point on the y-axis. So since it's an invariant point on the y-axis, I know that that must be a horizontal reflection. So for horizontal reflections, it's the opposite x value, not the opposite y value. So let's write our equations in terms of f of x. So g of x would equal to f of negative x. x becomes its opposite value. In terms of x, that's in terms of the original equation. So x gets replaced with a negative x. So it'll be 2 times negative x minus 3. So g of x equals negative 2x minus 3. That's my end function. Okay, so I just have two more examples following this kind of an idea. These ones here are radical functions. So I have the square root of x plus 4 minus 1, and I'm looking at what kind of a reflection it is. So here I can see that they meet at the invariant point that they have in common, which is on the y-axis, which means it is a horizontal reflection. So horizontal reflection means x becomes its opposite value. So g of x will equal to f of negative x. In terms of x is in terms of the actual equation. So g of x will equal to the square root of negative x plus 4 minus 1. Okay? So that's in terms of x. For my next graph, I see here that they meet right there and they have an invariant point on the x-axis. So since it's on the x-axis, I know it is a vertical reflection. So a vertical reflection means that y becomes its opposite value. So I'll have g of x equals negative f of x. Or in terms of x, in terms of the specific equation, I'm going to make each term its opposite value because I'm multiplying f of x by negative 1. So it will be negative root x plus 4, opposite value, and instead of a minus 1, it will be a plus 1. Okay, so those are two good examples, again, of graph 2 equation. So that's the end of this part of the lesson. So just to recap, if a is negative, it is vertically reflected in the x-axis which means x stays the same, the sign of y changes. If b is negative, it means it is horizontally reflected, and the sign of x changes. Now remember that reflections change the orientation, but not the shape and size. So speaking of reflections, I was just reflecting on pi, and I noticed that pi reflected is pi. Coincidence? I think not. 